The South Wales Valleys feature a fantastic rural-urban interface, a real asset to communities. However, there can be clashes with this interface, such as wildfires, which can have serious consequences for the environment and the safety and well-being of the communities living there. Healthy Hillsides is a case study about how we are applying the principles of the sustainable management of natural resources to a key issue affecting these communities. This is Freeze Habitat and um, it's a mosaic of habitats. So you have bracken, you have marshy grassland and flushes, you have scrub habitats, you also have heathland habitats. And it sits between the lowlands and the uplands and it's that marginal band of habitat which runs the length of the valleys. So we're looking at the bracken here and this is an area of land which isn't managed presently. So when you look there's a very very deep layer of dead material and there's absolutely nothing growing underneath. At this time of year you would expect to see some shoots coming up of the species rich grassland which underlies it. So all this layers on top of it is smothering that out completely. This all this dead material is fantastic kindling for fires. The fire service call it the big f fuel load. This is what goes up in flames and it can continue right away across the, the freeze habitat. So as part of the freeze mosaic you have flushes which they are small little watercourses which rise in these hillsides and then flow down the valley. Whilst very small individual ones they all collect down into the river. So when these watercourses travel through this burnt landscape it picks up all the, the dead carbon, the dead materials, the soils, it causes erosion, it takes pollutants down into the watercourse. And having this happen throughout the valley and throughout this hillside can have a much bigger effect down in the rivers when it's all been dragged into the watercourses and it'll impact on our water quality. It can have an impact on our drinking water. It costs more money to clean that water up. It costs more money to improve the habitats for fisheries or for the invertebrates or the general wildlife of rivers. So that knock-on effect from the hillside is noticed in the watercourses as well. So this hillside is actually quite important for us because um, in some ways this is where the project began. Um, in Back in early 2015 we'd met in the morning with the fire service with some of the wildfire officers and we chatted about uh, the recent burns and they told us that this hillside had, had all gone up overnight and it was a huge fire. So we visited the area, we took a couple of pictures and as we came to the site, actually two members of the fire service were there being filmed by BBC Wales. And we sort of hung around and we started chatting and really that was the kind of starting point as well of where we really sort of um, started to talk about wildfires, how we could work together and I still remember what the, what the chief of the fire service, what he said to me when I said we were really interested in this, particularly around the environment and he said it was music to his ears. So as we began working together um, and we came together, we talked about the issues, the challenges we were facing. Uh, early on there was, it was sort of ourselves, the fire service, Ron the Kanataf, the local authorities, countryside team. Um, but over time, gradually, we had conservation partners, members of the community, community groups, uh, the Wildlife Trust, South and West Wales, and we've sort of slowly sort of came together to really sort of uh, talk about this kind of issue. And as we've done that, so much has grown around that, because what's gone from a sort of single idea um, has grown into this sort of um, approach, really, which is on the one hand habitat management, but on the other hand, reducing the risk of fires as well. So what I've learned and taken from this approach is that uh, no one organisation could sort of deliver this on its own. Uh, it's got collaboration at its heart. We each bring something different to the table. Fire breaks, natural fire breaks are closing up. Footpaths are closing up due to brambles and the grasses and the bracken taking over. And these fires are now getting larger because of this. And this is one of the reasons why the fire service have moved into a, a sort of land management role. Because we've got this, this mantra that we, we've tried to stop the arsonists and we, we can't stop them all. We can't control the weather, but what we can do is manage the fuel. And one of the ways of fighting fire is to remove the fuel, and that's what we're now doing. And to deal with these fires, traditionally we've thrown resources, thrown firefighters at these fires. Traditionally it was with beaters walking up the mountains in structural fire kit and beating these fires out. And we've had incidents where there's been 20 fire engines putting out a grass fire on the Brecon beat guns. And now we've moved on and we now start to use fire to fight fire. We use fire before the fire season where we're managing vegetation, fuel, 
we're managing it, we're creating narrow fire breaks. We don't burn landscapes, we create narrow fire breaks in strategic locations that stop these large fires. Well, it's, it's huge. It's, it's a, been a, a bit of an eye-opener from our point of view. How, how many other organisations are actually interested in what we do and how we can all work together. One, to protect or make firefighter safety better. Secondly, to enhance the natural environment um, for everybody. And lastly, and perhaps more importantly, is to um, enhance the health and well-being of the people in the areas um, that we work. There's a number of sustainable management options for the hillsides. Uh, conservation grazing, if you're looking at all of the benefits of that hillside, so all of the functions it provides, that's the one that comes out of giving them most multiple benefits. Um, it manages, it retains the mosaic landscape and the complexity of the landscape, which is good for both ecology and flood risk and amenity as well. So bracken bruising is one of the pilot management techniques that we were trialling and we're really lucky to have um, heavy horses come in and the benefit of those is that they can tackle on the steep slopes, so slopes that aren't accessible to, to the machinery that we had available. And also one of the side benefits was it also brought the community in, so it was a very, very good way of engaging locally in the work that we were doing. Um, and the impact of that bracken bruising is that it reduces the vigour, so the fires are creating a condition where the bracken's coming back stronger and more dominant every year and you lose all of those plant species underneath and all of the um, diversity around that. So by reducing the vigour you get a really um, broad diversity in and amongst that. So we're not eradicating the bracken, we're just reducing it so it doesn't become that dominant spread across the hillside and bracken bruising has that sensitivity for real ecological gain as well as benefits when it comes to, it comes to reducing the fire risk. So here we're looking at a much thinner layer of bracken. This is far more natural, part of the mosaic of freeze habitat. So you can see already, this is the same time of year, and we've got some bluebells coming through here. So that bracken in a thin layer replicates the deciduous woodland habitat. So it has, it's very shaded. So you get these species like violets and bluebells coming through in these habitats. So this is a lot healthier. You have that variety of species and in that comes the variety of invertebrates and reptiles and birds. Can you tell me what you've learned about the nine principles of SMNR in relation to this project? Um, Really, I think working in that way and involving more people, having a, a much bigger conversation has just delivered so much more on the ground and so much more in the, the network. It's definitely opened our eyes to the different impacts of wildfires and has then secured massive funding for research which you know, is, is going to be really beneficial long term in how we manage this issue not just here, but right the way across South Wales, across Wales. Um, but it also has, you know, it, I feel that we, it's raised issues that will have an impact on the local person as well. So we've talked a lot about fly tipping associated with these sites, we've talked about access. So I think it really will make a difference to individuals, but also on a much wider scale. So I think, yeah, it's a brilliant way of working. In order to make this a long-term and sustainable project, we need to work with communities to, for them to take ownership of this issue. In other countries, it is quite common practice to manage that area between the hillside and your property to reduce the risk, to prevent the fire from taking hold of your, your home. This would also act as a buffer strip for preventative measures for fire service. They would know where to go, but it would also be a nice buffer for habitat, better for various invertebrates, for birds, to create that nice little strip. So in order to do this, we're working with the fire service to teach the communities what they can do to manage that. So the first couple of years, we will be undertaking that practical management, but working with the communities so they can eventually take that over so that we can then move on to another site and teach another community about how to protect themselves from fire. So what we've learned about the sustainable management of natural resources is that it's not theoretical, it's not hypothetical, and it's not about box ticking. It's about really challenging yourself and flipping it and thinking about what you're working on and applying those nine principles to what you're doing.